Michael Berge. Come on, everybody, yeah. What a crew. Good to see you, honey. Ed Gold, live looking, in person. Good looking crew. Thank you. Yeah, really. Say, right? Pat Greeley's got everybody. the wine with her. Exactly. No, it's not. It's Diet All right, Raul, fabulous. It should be wine. Does anybody else want to drink with Cat, or is she going to drink alone? We, we, the panelists and I, who I'm about to introduce, we're right, just talking need a drink, let back, me know. backstage. Uh, and we were actually thinking of moving this panel to the bar. Right. And the five of us would sit at the bar, have a chat, and have you guys all kind of like stay in with us, get your vodka shots, you know, whatever. But uh, we're going to stick with the program as we it were shut down. So we, we were, were shut, shut down. down. However, yes. if you have a drink, every time someone says digital, pound it. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. That's right. The vodka shots. That's where they come in. Yep. Okay. Right. So every time you hear digital, have pound a shot. It. Bottoms up. So I've got a great panel here. We're going to keep this super super tight because I know the day is uh, moving on. Uh, to my immediate left, we have Helen Giles, who is a uh, group director of Integrated National Media Investments with Campbell Ewald. Um, yeah. Okay. Helen. We can do applause for everybody. I like this. Uh, next to her is uh, Ed Gold, who's the ad director with State Farm. <laughs> representing Woo. a client. Everybody loves a client. I got my own cheering section. <laughs> and uh, next to Ed is uh, Kat Greenleaf, who I think you all know as not only a great TV personality, but has hosted this thing before. She, she knows this event very well, and she's a hoot, fun to hang with. So, uh, and last but not least, who is also fun to hang with, is Rahul Telang. Uh, he's a professor with Carnegie Mellon University and has recently co-authored the book Streaming, Sharing, Stealing, Big Data and the Future of Entertainment. So I think there might be just a wow. touch of relevance here. So, and for Rahul. So uh, now that we've got it started, um, for those of you who haven't had a chance to check your Twitter feed, uh, Twitter just shut down Vine today. So that's one less video platform for us to talk about, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and actually, I would just quickly love to get everyone's just 30 second take. Uh, did you ever use Vine? Do you think it's a good thing it's gone? It seems you know Instagram slash Facebook has won. Yet again, and we'll talk about Facebook a lot. Uh, <laughs> your takes, each of you. I'm going to start with you. Uh, Vine. Vine. I, you know, I think that this is symptomatic of what we're going through right now. We talked about change earlier today, and there are so many options out there, so many things to monetize that everything isn't always going to be able to stay around. And I think this is just a sign of that. Yeah, I mean, I think. Was Vine ever in your ad plans? Not really, no. Oh, I mean, I've, I've met a couple of Vine stars in the past. Um, but they've probably moved on to become Instagram stars or YouTube influencers. And so, you know, I mean, the six second, six second video is not dead. YouTube has now taken it on as, as an advertising platform for us. So, um, but I agree with what Helen was saying is that there's just too many places and yeah. people don't want to go everywhere. They, you know, because everybody has to then have a Vine account, have an Instagram account, have a Facebook account. Yes, we all and have so I think I, I think the uh, continued consolidation is there. Kat, you ever use Vine? Do you ever, did mm. you ever play into what you do? No, too short. I mean, I, I make 27 second pieces for the gas pumps. That's my limit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least give me 27 seconds to tell a full story. Six seconds as quickly as I speak, which is generally pretty quickly, I can't fucking do that. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Rahul, your, your advantage from uh, I academia? Don't, I don't use it, but my students do. Not but anymore. They won't now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a challenge, right? I mean, making money, ad-driven business models where the content is free is, is as yeah. all of you mentioned, it's a challenge. I mean, how do you stand out uh, is, is, is a significant challenge, not just for Twitter and Wine, but probably many other assets. Right. And I mean, it was, it was you know, Six seconds of branded content is pretty damn short. So. That's right. But uh, so once again, Facebook wins. The other news that I was going to talk about, but I heard backstage that Rich Greenfield said uh, the, the AT&T Time Warner deal may not even be done when we all meet here a year from now. So <laughs> we'll probably skirt past that one a little bit. But I, I, there, were, there are some implications. Uh, and where I kind of wanted to start past Vine is um, cord cutting and, it, and its impact on uh, your businesses or your vantage point as, as an academic. Um, you know, do you see it as a threat to your business interests or is it an opportunity? The notion that people are just leaving cable behind and consuming their video on new innumerable platforms. I think we have to look at it as an opportunity and find the opportunities because all of these things are happening. And so it's our job to figure out what's the best way for us to move forward given that. 
Um, and does it mean that our life is more complicated? Yes, but that's what we're, we're paid to do is to find the opportunity as things evolve. Okay. Yeah, I mean, our life is more complicated because of the amount of different media that's coming into the marketplace. And then, not, I mean, outside of Vine, but nothing really ever goes away. You know, television isn't going to go away. It's, right. There's just more stuff now. And so I think we just need to be able to handle that. And as people move away from cable, they're going to be going somewhere else. And, and our job, as the guy from Kara said, is to follow the audience. And we will do that because we all want to sell our products. And we will get into measurement in just a bit because following the audience with this explosion of video yep. is harder than ever. Um, but I mean, it, your, your predominant delivery vehicle is, is uh, at, literally and figuratively is a taxi cab, right? <laughs> Go figure, nobody even knows that I'm a goddamn TV show. It's a half an hour, it's on NBC, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, it, well, I knew True. that, but. No, it's okay. <laughs> I, I think maybe it's because of my association with you here, I think of the taxi stuff. Everybody does, it's okay, so, so yes. I think opportunity. I mean, if you had told me that I would make my living in the back of cabs and not as a hooker, I would have told you you were crazy. <laughs> and, you know, now it's happening. Right. And it's it built my business. And no celebrity gives a flying that I'm on USA Network all day, practically every day. Nobody cares that I'm on NBC across the country. They just want to be in the cabs. So if I were really smart, I'd, you know what, maybe I should propose this actually. Forget the show. We're not selling behind it. We're, and bring money toward the out of homes. That's really what I would, I would suggest. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, it's true, nobody cares that I'm on TV. So I would say, see, all of this is an opportunity. It's built my business and it's built a lot of businesses of entrepreneurs. Okay, thank you. You, you got to where I was trying to go and I Bam. screwed that up. So thank I'm you. <laughs> She's out, I lost her. Um, Rahul, cord, cord cutting is obviously, you know, probably nine out of 10 of your students don't even know what a cable subscription is anymore. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you, if you ask them in the class, Everybody has a, either a Netflix or a Hulu or what have you. And you know, one of the, one of the probably revolution that's gonna take place, I think, because of the court, court cutting is, number one, how the content is gonna be produced, because court cutting allows the content creators to get close to the consumers, which the mass broadcaster made it really difficult where everything was 18 to 34, or 9 to 9.45, all that linearity is gone. And I think the second thing that's going to happen, which I'm listening to all day long, is it's going to, it's create, it's going to create data revolution uh, because it's going to provide enough information about consumers, all these devices, where it can be integrated and it can go back into how the content can be produced and targeted and obviously how the advertisers are going to chase the consumers. So to just stay on that for one minute, though, uh, you know, one of the big pitches of the cable industry uh, and, and, and those providing multi-channel services was always that they have this rich data, um, they haven't been able to harness it, but whether it's privacy or whatever issues, but you're saying that there's an even greater opportunity in data from, from all the, the, the options of cord cutting. So one of the experience that I have working with a lot of media firms as well as with the technology firms like Netflix, Google, it's one thing to have the data, it's other thing to have a culture to use the data. And what I feel is that in many of the media firms, unlike the Amazons and the Google, the culture to the use data, the skill to use the data, the skill to make decision based on the data, that is also significantly lacking. So yes, cable companies have it, and probably they're using it. There are significant regulatory challenges they face, of you course. know, for, for the, all the obvious reasons. But again, to catch up with the tech firm, I think we are also talking about fairly significant skill gap. Okay. You know, the biggest issue, though, is going to be what's going to be the commercial or the advertising opportunity. All this cord cutting is being done, you know, because they're getting Netflix mm -hmm. subscriptions. There is no advertising on there. Certainly, oh. there's a few product placements here and there, but there's no advertising. And so the question becomes, how are we going to get our message out there to an audience that is, you know, we love, we love video. Okay? We love video. It is... Sight, sound, and motion, it's the thing that gets our best story told better than any other medium, but, you know, are we going to be able to do it on YouTube when people can just easily uh, skip our ad or make it non-skippable, but it's only six seconds long? And so the question is, how are we going to be able to build our brands in a cord-cut cord world? So isn't the answer branded content? I think it's one of the answers. I think it's, it's also how do we evolve how do we evolve the advertising process to make it more interesting? I think 
we've created a situation where we have a lot of clutter and people don't want clutter, but good advertising, when you don't even maybe even know that it's an advertisement, actually is part of our pop culture. And so when we can find that magic, then it can work still, I think. But I think you're right. It's going to become challenging when we have areas where there's no advertising. On the flip side, there's the need for monetization. So I think that that will allow us to have opportunities. Yeah, I mean, good content will find a way, but you know, we're an insurance company. You know, we are not going to let a guy jump out of an airplane without a parachute. You know, to to <laughs> to become a viral hit. It just, I mean, it, no, well, maybe it will hit. End. The, right, right. I know. Well, we do great. save. He, he does. He does live, thankfully. Um, but Thank you know. <laughs> Getting a viral, a script, getting a, guess, yeah. right, getting a viral hit, and getting the amount of people that we need to buy our product. I mean, yeah, five million people watching a, or let's see, we had ten million people watch a Dude Perfect video that we sponsored in conjunction with Aaron Rodgers and Chris Paul. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of people, but it's one thing, and you don't have that repeat viewership, and that's the thing. Our 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 products, or a lot of our products, are sold either every day if you're McDonald's. Or if you're a state farm, you know, it's once every six months, once every year, once every 10 years. And so how do you get that continued repeat view, viewership from the audience that you actually want to watch it? But, but are we all agreed here that, that, you know, kind of the cord is not going to go away? No. A and that, I mean. Just think of it differently. It's not one cord. It's just you have to go on now. That's right. Cords, right. You yeah. can't just have one season pass. It's got to be. You, Go where the people are. I mean, it's so obvious. It's so right. it's not new. We all know that, right? So make good stuff. That would be my recommendation. Make good stuff, and people will go to it. Right. You that, have to make so. good stuff, but you also have to have commercial time within there. And right. it can't just be a pre-roll, a mid-roll, and a post-roll. Look, if you look it's not at, enough. But for, if you look at these. Netflix's numbers, and I, I don't mean to get on a tangent because we have little enough time as it That's is. That's right. But if you look at Netflix's numbers, they're not bringing in the revenue for the amount of debt that they're carrying. Right. They're going to probably end up having to go ad supported so. at some point. I think. I don't so. think it's going to be forever like this. I do. You, yeah. Do you agree? And so you think so? Yeah, I think that at some point they're going to look for another way to monetize. Does that mean that they're going to go to the traditional model? I don't think so. But look at the things that Hulu has done and how that's transformed the industry right. in terms of letting people select things, letting people choose how they're going to view right. their commercials. Those are improvements to what we do. Right, and there's nothing wrong with improving on how you deliver marketing right. messages because, no. frankly, people are tired of the 30-second ad. I mean, I work for Ad Week, and I skip every <laughs> ad possible. I, I'm not ashamed to admit it because I think everybody else does, too. People in the industry but, are the but, worst at it. Yeah. But, but I think the, the, the premium content on Netflix, I actually think that it is going to be subscription-based. It has, it has, they have already set the, those standards. So they might create another tier where you, you could have uh, ad supported or some sort of a hybrid model. But I think for the premium content and the premium subscribe, I don't think that they can get away reverting the model back to ad supported because their consumers are already used to watching TV the way Netflix is offering them right now. So I'm not as optimistic. And time is on I their think. side, yeah, because they're they're the ones that are inheriting the world. Exactly. They're used well, to not seeing it this way. And it's they've true. created a great viewing experience, right? I mean, you, everybody in this room wants to watch a show without commercials in it, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And, you've, and we've given that to them, or, or the customer's gotten it. And therefore, if you try to put advertising in it, then someone else will come behind Netflix and do something exactly. with no commercials in it, and that's where people will go to. But it, Go ahead. Well, the question Rather is what people are willing to pay and how many That's are true. willing to pay it. And how long can they sustain it at a price right. that, that works for people? So I think that's right. where you start to see trade-offs over time. Yeah, and at the same time, as you start getting into a skinnier bundle where you don't have to pay $150 to get 500 channels, of which you watch three of them or mm -hmm. 10 of them. Right, was that a $35 yeah. package that uh, at and right. just announced? Yeah. Correct. So, um, all right, so uh, we're, is ESPN we, in it? That's all I care about. <laughs> well, live sports is one of the last vehicles right. that is, is it, it truly a place where the 30 second ad still has some relevance and value, right. although some would question that. Um, and there's always going to be live sports, and that's always going to be ad supported. So we think there's always going to be live mm -hmm. sports, right? I would imagine so. But anyway, we're, we're digressing, and I want to get into quickly okay. ab about measurement. As, as you all saw, uh, Nielsen just announced, I think at the beginning of this week or late last week, uh, they're going to finally, you know, do some dedicated measurement of out-of-home viewership. Uh, I think it starts next April. Well, they're and really they're getting ahead of this thing, huh? Huh? They're really getting ahead really, of really this really thing. Really, really getting ahead. That's right. Yeah, well, right. you know, 
they've always been known to be right on the dime. Uh, but uh, eventually they'll, they'll fold it into their, their mainstream ratings. Right. Um, clearly measurement is an issue here. I mean, we have Facebook admitting a few months ago that, you know, oops, we lied about the numbers. They're not as big. Uh, measurement is key mm -hmm. to all of you, perhaps not you, Rahul, but I'm sure observing this, um, measurement is key. So you know who the hell your audience is, when they're watching, and, and who's the right client to give. Um, what do you think is still missing on the measurement side of tracking viewers in all these places that you find them now that is not just through the cord? Well, again, I think that one of the things, I mean, I think there are a lot of things that we could bring up, but one of the keys that you know, probably everyone in this room is aware of is that we want something that's apples to apples across, and yet um, every device is different, and so the mechanisms are different, and so that has inherent challenges with it. Um, as it relates to out of home, we think it's great that there's measurement that's starting. I think there's a difference between being in a cab and being captive and being in a restaurant where maybe you can hear the sound, but you're less likely to be captive. And so I think the measurement tool in, for example, restaurants is going to be, can you hear the audio? I don't know if that's enough um, for me anyway. Um, yeah, I would agree. I mean, it's, it's, it's how are they going to actually tell me that someone was watching my ad at that time? Yep. And again, can't do it really in the home either. You know, people walk out during commercial time. It's, it's, it certainly will be better than what we have, and it will allow the networks to help monetize their programming better because to a certain extent, people are watching it out of home. People are watching live sports. I mean, how many people are driving into the city of Chicago tomorrow night to watch the games around Wrigley Field that can't get in there? You know, right. and they're watching in a bar. Yeah, every bar, every bar, five square miles right. is going to be packed to the rafters. Exactly. Yeah. So, and that doesn't really get measured as well as it should. Although Nielsen's trying. No, and so. we appreciate the free uh, free coverage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kat, you're obviously reliant on knowing how many people are watching you on TV as well as in taxis. Here's the thing, I'm actually not. I have been making the same kind of content from the beginning, whether it's doing well or not doing well. It's not so expensive for us, for NBC, to have time, and I would, I would say to anybody who wants to be in the cabs, like, it's, it's affordable enough right now to get into the cabs yeah. and to put spots in the cabs. Give it a shot. Give it a try. I have not now for I'm the grandmother of the cabs. You know, I've been in there for almost eight years. And it, so some pieces maybe do better than others, but there's no do better. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm on. I'm a staple. And, and I, I again, I implore people to give it a try because it's really can open up new channels of things. So I don't want to know what people are thinking every second that I'm on. Even for your half-hour really show. Know. Even for your half-hour show, there's not a little bit of pressure to like or, or the desire to know. Are your ratings going up? Are you doing the right things or not? Okay. I mean, I seriously, like, I personally yeah. don't want to know. I'm sure NBC wants to know, but my half hour show is on at 1.30 in the morning. I don't think NBC really cares. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. That's an honest answer. Rahul. I'm sure many people in the audience and certainly all of us know that NB uh, Netflix actually doesn't share any information about how many people are watching the content. Right. Mm -hmm. And there is already a lot of debate and controversy. I think NBC, somebody from NBC, Alan Wurzel, kind of came up and said, look, the ratings on Netflix actually are pretty bad, so what is happening? Uh, but I think one of the implications of card cutting is also, you know, what are we going to measure? And what, what is salient and relevant? If you look at from a Netflix and Hulu point of view, all they offer is like a big bundle of content. As long as you find some part of that content useful enough that you're willing to pay $9.99, that's all they care about. Right. right. They so don't need, they whether don't one need. particular content is watched by 12 million people versus another by 5 Great million point. people, that, that, that becomes a little less salient for them when they're bundling these thousands of hours of content. Right. So I think how we are going to look at the rating and how we are going to evaluate its impact itself is, I think, you know, probably meaningfully going to change. So if we are moving in that direction that you guys don't necessarily want from, away from traditional advertising, yep. it, it, ratings really just doesn't matter as, as much. Not as much, I think. No. Need up there 10 bucks a month. No, because if you look at the ratings today, every show on network primetime television you know, would have been canceled today if it was rated that way 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. you know, nothing would survive at a 1 or a 1.5 rating on right. network television. Now that's like a hit show because, ooh, it really targets this specific audience. <laughs> and I, I think it's all relative. Yes, net, Netflix doesn't have a huge rating for any one particular show, even the new stuff 
but the amount of people watching Netflix content That's right. is what it is. And so the question is, are you able to aggregate a rating point against all of the content, exactly. not just a specific show? Right. Because we don't buy just one specific show. We buy a network. We buy lots of shows. Right. right. You want to buy talks too? Well, and can you buy it across? One thirty in the morning? We're good to go. <laughs> yep. But we'll talk after this. Five in the <laughs> My agency's right over there, and, and uh, <laughs> Leslie will be happy to talk to you. Thanks, Leslie. Oh, you I look forward to it. <laughs> well, well, in addition to not just buying one show, but buying, yeah. you know, a, a schedule, let's just say there's also that there are, the, the programming is being delivered in many different places. You That's can right. watch Jimmy Fallon when you're in the cab, and you can watch it on your, you know, your iPhone or your iPad, and, and so are there ways to aggregate all of those things so right. that we're collecting all of the audience. I mean, ESPN has started going in that direction with what they're doing, and that starts to bring the ratings back up again. Yeah, what used to be perceived yeah. as cannibalization is now just smart marketing. Right. Mm -hmm. that's a, that seems to be a big sea change. Mm -hmm. right. um, I mean, I appreciate what ESPN is doing by aggregating the audience because the sports audience, whether they're watching on their phone or their tablet or a computer or on TV, is relatively similar. And you would think you get a relatively similar audience that's watching you know, a late night with Jimmy Fallon um, spot you know, wherever they are. Right. So but it'd be great if you could buy it all as one, exactly. not this piece over here, this piece yeah. over here, this piece Which over here. Which is why that, that measurement is gonna be kind of key, yep. because if you can yeah. track it. Um, somehow we are already out of time. No way. Uh, it's the end of the day like and This was like the fastest panel I've ever done in my life. Um, so let's all meet at the bar. Uh, yeah. No, well, but uh, before you go, I just quick question, just lightning round. What is the non-TV video platform that you use the most? And I'm starting with you, Rahul, and coming back this way. What, More besides than your television set. I just look at my it? son, and even the live sports, he watches on YouTube, which is very <laughs> disappointing. But, you know, this is where I see the future is going. He's watching live sports. Five on minutes later, ten minutes later, one hour later, he's not interested in watching football from, you know, at six o'clock, but he watches football at eight o'clock and looks at the plays that he really loves to watch again and again and again. Okay. And I look at him and say, this is where the media consumption is going. That's the future. His son yeah. is what I no, Hulu. I, Hulu is Hulu. where I get all of it. You're on Hulu all the time. All the time. Cool. You know, I'm, I'm old school. I still watch TV. But if I go to my 10 and 12-year-olds, they don't watch TV. They watch YouTube. And they watch it consistently. Like and they all watch the time, right? All the time. And that's where they're getting all their content from. So, And that's where they're going to probably get their content from in the future. Uh, we love finding the clips of, like, Saturday Night Live or whatever online afterwards because you can hone in on exactly what you want to see and skip the rest. Now, let me ask, a desktop or mobile? Mobile. Or both? Mobile. Mobile, generally. I still watch a lot of desktop mm -hmm. at, my, at, at yeah. work. But, uh, Old school, dude. Old school. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> look at me. <laughs> so anyway, well, uh, that's it, guys. Yeah. We are so out of time, and I'm so sorry about that. But please, thank you to these great panelists. Good job, Kat. Way to go.